Hello, so in today's video, I wanna go over how I grew my first software business from zero to over $300,000 in its first 12 months of existence. I feel like it's important that I break down um, the steps I took so that you, not that you can replicate them, but for you to understand why I took those steps and so that, to, so that you can apply those same principles to your own SaaS. So yeah, let's, uh, let's break it down. Okay, so I think it's important that you understand how I did it, like the marketing and the strategy behind it and the mistakes I make so you don't make them as well. Um, again, it's more of a theoretical video, but I think it's important that you understand and get, try and get inside of my head of what I was thinking at the time. So when you're building your software, you can take some uh, ideas and gold nuggets of what I was thinking and how you can apply this to your business too. Uh, so yeah, if you don't know, this was my very first software company. It is a marketplace, a two-sided marketplace, just like Airbnb, right? But people went here to buy, a, buy and sell services. For example, this is a Wikipedia page service. So you went here, to this marketplace, this seller was registered because this was a marketplace of sellers. Like Airbnb, you have people selling, uh, renting houses, buyers and sellers, and on here as well. The site is quite so, slow, not sure why. But again, you could go on here, you could buy this Wikipedia page, right? You could go and buy uh, these links. You could go and buy stuff in the SEO niche, so in the search engine optimization niche of page SEO, which were backlinks, on page, which is like content, technical SEO, which is like, I don't know, increasing your site speed and all that. And these were all the the SEO experts who you onboarded on, onto the platform. Again, people that sold services, all these right here, okay? And, um, and yeah, these are all the people that we, we onboarded, okay? And so that's what, that was the idea, right? And um, I was uh, not lucky enough, but uh, I was, I guess, lucky yeah, to some extent that uh, before I, I started my own marketplace, I was selling on marketplaces too. Right, I was selling on Fiverr, which is basically the same thing as Vetted, but for all the niches, web design, programming, and all that. Right, um, Vetted was solely for one niche, SEO, okay? And so I was like four years ago to the date, right? I always been into SEO. I had an agency, I was, I was ranking clients' site and making money off of it, okay? And so eventually I realized, okay, I wanna, sell my services in marketplaces because it's quite easy. And I won't, I won't bore you with this, but yeah, eventually I, I, I started selling on Fiverr, right? And then I moved to other marketplaces. And then I thought, okay, I know how to sell these marketplaces and how they work, let me just create one. So this is the whole story behind this, uh, this product. So it came out of a necessity in the sense that I was selling on all these marketplaces and I found that they were all, all lacking transparency, right? And here I made it mandatory that everyone had to show their face, right? To sell here, you had to show your face. Every person on here has to show their face and every single service has to have samples, okay? So there's a high level of transparency here, right? One, again, everyone shows their face. Two, every single service has to buy samples, as we have samples. So you always knew what you were buying and who you were buying it from. And again, that came out of necessity because a lot of services that I bought on these other marketplaces, I was not getting, getting scammed necessarily, but I was not getting what I thought I was meant to get. Okay, so that's the whole reason why this was built. It came out of a pain point, right? Now, before I go over this, I wanna go over the, the mistakes I made, which I hopefully you don't make them, which the biggest one, I mean, everyone makes mistakes, but the biggest one was um, we spent, so I had the, the idea in mind, right? I had the idea, I wrote this like, I think it was 18 page long, ridiculous long business plan on how we were gonna make money, all, your comp all our competitors, what they were doing, what we we're gonna do differently, uh, the features I wanted, I even do drawings, mockups. I spent like two months doing this. First mistake. Then I found a developer, you probably all know about this story, but we have videos on, on how to find developers and all that. And I told him, listen, I wanna build this amazing, amazing like star, do I know how to draw a star? Amazing star product, right? Go out and build this for me. And he spent, I think the, the project was for six months, but of course things usually always take longer. And so it ended up taking like 12 months to build, right? And what happened is, and I've talked about this in other videos, if you haven't watched them, go watch them, is that um, we built it with all these cool features, right? And which I thought people would wanna use, but turns out people only wanted to use a few of them. Right, and I'll give you an example. For example, uh, I think we had like a feature where you had videos on, on your profile, which I thought, okay, this makes it even more transparent, right? People, users can see people's faces, they can see the samples, and there was like a video here, right? Everyone has to upload a video, right? It's gonna be great. Nobody used it, 
right? And so we spent, it seems like a simple feature, but it takes time and effort to build. And we, I, I asked him to build a ton of features that in the end, people didn't use. It were features that I thought people were gonna use, but they, didn't, they, they did not care for them, right? And that was the biggest mistake because we spent 12 months building something that wasn't pre-validated into the market. And so that's why I always talk about this. You gotta first validate, go out and validate your idea. Go out and validate your MVP, your minimum viable product, as fast as you can. Don't build, then sell, right? Sell first, that's supposed to be a money sign, then build, right? Because I did the mistake with this with this business. I invested a lot of money into this. Um, I have since sold it, as you know. But uh, if we just had built like a simple version of the marketplace first, we would have done so much better, okay? So don't make this mistake. Don't make the mistake of knowing uh, in your head, okay, I wanna build this, I have this perfect idea, and waste or spend a lot of time doing it, building it, because at the end of the day, you're gonna be wrong. That's just the reality. And so you need to evaluate it as fast as possible, right? In a month's time, even less, an MVP, okay? So that's the biggest mistake, and I've talked about this in the other videos, so I won't, um, I won't like, dive too deep into this right now, but again, you have talked about this in the reviews. Now, in terms of marketing and strategy, right? I usually, I usually know I, I, I had this personal brand. At the time, of course, it didn't have 10,000 subs. Right? I started four years ago with shitty videos, right? And I was just documenting what I was doing for my clients in, in the SEO space, right? Uh, how to build backlinks, QR research and all that. And so I thought, okay, I have this marketplace now and people have all these services to sell, right? A bunch of like a, a lot of like different uh, vari variated, I guess, SEO services, right? And so I thought, what's the best way to get people to buy these services? Well, the best way is to record YouTube videos on how to do each one of these, and then let people know, okay, you can do this manually, just like how I thought you, because I knew about SEO, I knew how to do SEO, I knew how to do all this, and so my idea was, okay, let me just record a, a bunch of videos on how to build and how to do this stuff. And then at the end say, listen, you can go out and do all this manually, or you can just hire an expert to do it all for you. That was my that was my like my marketing strategy with this. And it worked, right? For example, for this one right here, how to build a Wikipedia page, right? I just went out and recorded a video on how to build, how to make a Wikipedia page. This has a hundred thousand views, right? It is a shitty video, eight minute video, like posted a year ago. It's I'm I'm cringing, I, I it looks bad, but I go over it step by step how to do it, right? And then in the end I just tell them, listen. You can do this all manually, or you can just go and hire someone on VET as an expert to do it for you, right? And again, why am I telling you this? Because I think it's important that you understand the different strategies I took building different softwares, because it's very different to building a marketplace than building a B2B software or a B2B software. It's very different, okay? But I, I wanna give you as much context as I can, right? And again, just a, a shitty video of me recording my screen on how to do it, and then, there's a call to action, outsourcing it to Vetted, which was the name of the marketplace, right? And it's just me going over how you can do it, right? Go here, buy the, the service. And there's a link here to buy the service, okay? And the, I was not lucky enough, but this video became an evergreen video. So this video gets, I think it's 300 views every single day. It was posted in 2022, until this day, because it is an evergreen video, and I've talked about the evergreen video subject here on this course. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. But it became an evergreen video, right? How to X, Y, Z, step-by-step tutorial. And again, it was because of this that I said, okay, let me just do this for every single service. And so, again, note, note that m most of the growth strategy from VET came from YouTube, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you should leverage YouTube or not. I think you should, but don't just rely on one channel, of course, okay? I just tell you that most of the growth strategy came from YouTube. And I started doing that more and more, right? Local SEO course. This is a five hour video with almost 50,000 views. This gets, I think, 100 views per day or 200, right? And it's just me going over how to do local SEO. And I'm recommending, I'm, telling, I'm teaching people how to do all of this, and all these, I'm teaching people basically how to do all of this, and I'm recommending the services at the end, right? It's essentially the, the, the strategy behind it is teaching, right? Content on teaching, info based teaching. And they'll telling them, okay, yes, I just thought you I thought how you, I just taught you I taught you sorry how you can do it, but if you don't have time for it, just pay someone on this amazing marketplace to do it for you. Super simple, right? Super super simple. Of course, not every single person that watches buys a service. Far from that, but you get the point, right? Um, this one is actually one for my new SaaS, but this one, how to master SEO, it was a, a two-hour-long video on how to on how to SEO. Sorry, this one, 
20,000 views, how to make a Google, Google Graph knowledge panel. It's just a, a, a video um, with a call to action to, I think, one service. I mean, the service should be around here. I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's another service down here of a guy that creates a knowledge panel, okay? So again, just a video of me speaking about SEO, <clears throat> excuse me, and then with a call to action, outsource to an expert. You see here? Yeah, people just go out and buy it. Link here to buy it, okay? And so that was my thought process behind this because, you know, I have this marketplace. I have all this amazing talent. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal how these guys do it because I know how to do it. And then I'm just going to say, listen, this takes so much work. You're going to spend so much time on this. Just go hire someone off of this amazing marketplace. And that was this, the marketing strategy, okay? The whole marketing strategy behind this uh, was YouTube and how-to tutorials, right? Um, now, of course, you never want to just um, depend solely on one channel. You never want to just spend on one uh, on YouTube. We're also doing Google SEO, right? We're also doing ads. We're also doing other stuff, right? But again, the biggest contributing factor for growth was YouTube, again. And I'm trying to, the thing is that I, I'm not recording this video just because. I'm recording these videos for for you for try for to, to try to make you think how you can implement this thought process into your software. Okay? Like I had this software that allowed people to buy and sell services, what we call a marketplace. And the way in which I found to promote it was okay, let me just reveal how everyone does this and then redirect them to the platform where they can buy it. So hopefully this was valuable enough. Because again, the goal here is to start making you think, right? Start your brain up and make you think of creative ideas to market your product. Because as you know, marketing is just arbitrage, right? We marketers, and if you want to market something, you're just, marketing is just doing something that not enough people are doing yet, right? Because at the point that everyone is doing, it stops working. So that's why marketing is hard. It's because you gotta, because sorry, you gotta constantly be looking out for the next thing that works. For example, people that hopped on on TikTok early made a ton of money. People that hopped on YouTube early make it made a ton of money, right? I generated a ton of revenue revenue for the marketplace because of this strategy, right? Because it it's somewhat a novel strategy that works, right? People that hopped on on Google Ads uh, ten years ago made a ton of money. Same thing for Facebook ads, right? But eventually. Facebook ads stopped working because it got a bit too expensive. Not stopped working, but it got too much, too expensive. Google ads got too expensive, so it stopped working. So people moved, move, you keep on moving to uh, other things. So again, I'm not saying that you need to leverage YouTube or that YouTube is going to work for you. I'm just giving you the behind the scenes, behind the curtain of what I did and the reasoning behind it, which is the more important thing is the reasoning behind it. The reasoning. Because if YouTube dies tomorrow, you can apply the same thing to something else, right? Because Google stopped working, Facebook stopped working, if TikTok stopped working, and you, you'll just move on to the next thing and you apply it. That's what marketing is all about. Arbitrage, constant changing, constant chasing of the next thing, the constant chase for attention. Because if everyone is doing something to get attention, that something is going to stop working. So hopefully this was valuable. Let me know if you have any questions, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Also, I forgot to mention, but I think it's important that I mention that we grew, or I grew this from zero to uh, over $350,000 in sales the, the first year, okay, the first 12 months. So the first 12 months, we grew like we grew this like a rocket ship uh, to over $350,000. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that yet another proof that the strategy that I implemented actually worked, okay? Because I don't just ramble here on and on for ages, without a, a purpose, right? My purpose is to show things that actually worked for me. Because if they work for me, you can extrapolate that, extrapolate it, sorry, and apply it to your own stuff, right? So did you, did you just wanna mention that in there? Yeah.